So what uh, I decided to do then, and at this point John Benner came in uh, to join the, the Augusta Extension Office. So this has been our project this past summer, um, was to, to look at a year in the life of a fescue pasture. And we spent an inordinate amount of time working on this, and we'll probably continue to do so. Uh, but what we wanted to look at was those toxin levels and those alkaloid levels, how they fluctuate over the course of a year. And then I also wanted to look at um, the nutrient content of those pastures. Now to do this, this is a little more in depth than that initial endophyte sampling that we did. So we, we backed down and just worked with five farmers in the valley. And you can see the, the locations here, pretty well spread out. Um, and we ended up tracking nine pastures total, and we tracked them from spring green up through October here, and we'll continue to do so through winter. But those pastures represented a number of different management techniques or strategies. I mean, some of them were continuously grazed, some of them were rotationally grazed, some were clipped or bush hogged, and then others still were stockpiled for grazing in late summer, or some of them even had some hay cut on them. Now how we sampled these pastures is somewhat important, so I want to take a minute to tell you about that. For the toxicity testing, you know, to test for those alkaloids, we took grab samples throughout the pasture, but we sampled fescue only. Okay, we identified each plant as we went along and chose only fescue. For the nutritive testing, again, it was a grab sampling, uh, kind of randomly across the pasture. And this was mostly fescue plants. There's there were, I know there were some other grasses in there. We weren't quite as concerned uh, with getting just fescue for the nutrient content. But the reason we did it this way and tested only fescue was because we wanted to get a baseline for what our potential toxicity is if you had a monoculture fescue stand. I know there's a lot of you out there that probably have pastures that have a lot of clover in or other species in and certainly you can say well maybe my, my toxicity is not quite as bad as what I'll show. Um, maybe the nutrient content, you know, protein is a little bit higher or whatever. But this gives us a baseline to work off of. The other thing I'll point out is we tried to sample in a way that mimicked how the animals were selecting plant material. So, for example, from green up through June, the animals were pretty much eating the entire plant. Uh, so this picture here, you can see that cow's got a clump of fescue sticking out of her mouth. and. Uh, you know, even though we had stems, we had seed heads at that point in time, they're still relatively green, and I suppose the animals felt you know that was all right for them, so they they went on and ate that whole plant. When you get more into this July time period down here, this bottom photo, these stems and seed heads were really starting to dry out. Seed heads were starting to fill out, and uh, it was a lot more unattractive to them, and they tended to just put their head down and focus on that leafy undergrowth. 